is Friday afternoon. What is the time? Half past three. So <clears throat> town is super busy. People all over the show leaving work, leaving work early, like some people should. But yeah, I've got a call out for a large yellowish gray brown black snake, as they tell me, um, behind a door in an old age home. So I'm gonna head over there and we're gonna see what we're gonna find. Oh, it's actually a really nice looking one. No, no, it's a little. As you can get over a small one. Is it? Oh, it's a small one. So that was pretty pretty easy and uneventful. Um, I didn't realize that it was an old age home, so a little bit sketchy for cobras to be cruising around old age homes. But yeah, I got the cobra, secured it, just dropped it off, and we are getting back home. Quick and easy call out on a Friday afternoon. See you later. Good afternoon, and what is going on? Um, and welcome to this week's video. We are on the top of Tear Mountain. It's pretty cold, pretty windy. The mist keeps rolling in. Um, to give you an idea, that is Camps Bay, um, all that sort of good stuff. Hot Bay over that side. And we're on this mountain and we're going to see if we can't turn up some herbs. that changes. Have a look at this. This is a Cape Crag lizard, but as you can hear, the wind is absolutely loud on top of the mountain. It's a really nice um, specimen, super impressive. It's nice yellow flames, pitch black on the top. I'm gonna attempt to photograph it, but we'll see about that. A crazy habitat here on the mountain. You can see all the water just Sleeking out of the rocks here. It's pretty overcast, pretty misty up here. And then down there is the city of Kaitsan. I live down there somewhere. It's like a quick 15 minutes, 10, 15 minute drive up to the mountain. Nice to do in the afternoon. So what do you know? Flip this little sign on the edge of the trail. And we've got Cordylus niger, um, otherwise known as the black girdle lizard. Pretty much endemic to this Cape Peninsula. You can see, if I just get real close to him, he's got quite heavily keeled scales. There you go, you can see they're quite heavily keeled scales. He's got quite a bony, flat, narrowish head. Perfect for sneaking into these little rock cracks, you know, I'll try to show his tail. And they've got this pretty spinose tail with these little whirls on, so once they get into the rock cracks, they're pretty difficult to try and get out. But now I see this little guy, I'm just going to put him back under his sign and we're going to keep on going. Later, brethren. So here's another species that we just picked up. <laughs> this one's coming out. Uh, it's just a little marble leaf toad gecko. This guy's absolutely tiny. So I'm just going to put him back on his rock here and he's going to go back under his rock. And get it this Later, friend. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but there's a little black girdle lizard just poking his head out the rock. Here you go, he's just basking. Well, he's not really basking. There ain't no sun. These guys spook really quickly. As you get close, they generally zip away. You can see he's just in this tight little mossy crevice on the side of the rock. It looks right over to the depths of the mountain. So I made it down just in time. All the way from up top there down through the cable car uh, for the last cable car of the day because the weather apparently is adverse and when it's too windy 
the cable car stops so I was fortunate to get on the last one didn't see too much besides a couple of those cordlets and one or two geckos but yeah we're probably gonna get out again tomorrow and see what else can find that is Signal Hill putting you on his of me to Cape Town that is it for today I will catch you guys when we head out next path for chameleons and well he's flopping off now which is a nice little sub adult kept off chameleon he's just flopping around it's quite dark on that side and he hasn't got his obviously fully adult colors yet but something you never get tired of seeing kept off chameleon but the only native chameleon to the only native dwarf chameleon to the cape peninsula He's gonna let this guy carry on and go back into his little bush. There's still sort of my nature's over in the background there, the mountain. This guy can go back. I'm gonna carry on and see what else he can find. Later, brother. around the sort of scales are. Your cobras and stuff like that are going to have much sort of angular scales. Pretty cool to at least see some activity of snakes. So I just got a call out for a puff header at this complex. Um, I arrived here and the door is open. And apparently there's a puff somewhere here. It was by these stairs. Oh, there you go. Have a look at that. There's a young male puffer just sitting on this little ledge here. We are just gonna pop him in this tube and we are gonna go let him go. You can see the mountain is right up there. So he's obviously come down the hill and he's just sitting there. So here's just a look at that little puffer that, that we just removed from that for you uh, of the little Apartment complex again. It's actually not too far away from the Cobra from the other day, and there he goes. Pafada has been released. Good morning. We're at the west coast this morning, um, doing a little bit of a tour. Just find our first herb of the day. Scratching through this little bit of molly, got a little Cape Sand frog. Hey, come back here, brother. This is, yeah, like I said, Cape Sand toad. Often sit in these little mole heaps waiting out for a bit of rain and moisture to come through. Awesome. And we got our first snake of the day here. It's a little herald snake. I don't see a lot of these out here. Whoa, it's got a really black head. So that was frustrating. Just before I was about to pull that herald out, I just got storage issues. So just had to stop and redo or refilm this clip. This is just this herald snake that we just flipped under that little rock and um, you can see if we get a good look at him you can see how dark that head is um, which is quite atypical for herald snakes. They're also called red lip snakes um, which you can see is not really a great name because this guy's head is completely pitch black. Um, looks sort of like the centipede eaters or even a little black headed python. But yeah you can see his head is pitch pitch black. He's got absolutely no color on the upper lip. So very misleading name for anyone who's trying to learn about the herald snake and its key characteristics. If you'll sit still for a few seconds, which he won't at the seams. So you can see he's got dark head, this sort of yellow with these sort of speckles on the back. This is quite a small one, they get quite a bit bigger. They can get close to about 80, 90 centimeters down here. So I am just going to get a couple of photographs of this guy. Get a little bit more footage, um, and then we're going to carry on and see what else the day holds. There you go, you can see the nice head. Oh, he's not too keen to hang around. So, talk about a quick double grab, double flip, or well, double scratch. What I've got here are two newborn Cordylus macrophyllus, otherwise known as the large scale girdled lizards. And they were just under here, under this bit of dried wood at the base of this tree with all these leaves. These are super interesting little lizards. Um, they pretty much exclusively just live on the west coast in these sort of sandy um, sandy dunes amongst these small bushes and shrubs, um, often in close proximity to the euphorbia bushes where they 
sort of reside in the, the root structure. Um, unfortunately, classified as vulnerable due to sort of habitat destruction and de degradation, which is quite a shame. Um, but these two little guys, I'm just going to pop them straight back where I found them. Just right under this little piece of log here. Later, brothers. You see, they'll just pop off and go find a meal. So this must be the Kodalid mega spot because I just got this one. Um, this is pretty much an adult large-scale girdled lizard, Kodalis macrophyllus. Um, and the other ones were right down there, right at that piece of wood over there. So not even 30 seconds later, um, and we got another one. You can see they've got really short, short little tails in comparison to the body. Obviously, bodies. I mean, the tail is just longer than the body, but not by much. You can see they've got these heavily armored scales, uh, hence the name rough scaled. Got a lizard. Um, and yeah, these guys, again, he was just booking three on the pass, so he's just going to go back, back into the bush. Later, friend. So I just missed the sand snake. I just flipped this rock and have a go at that. That is the tiniest spotted harlequin snake I have ever seen. Um, these guys are venomous, obviously, but they're not dangerous. Have a look at the size of this thing. Have a go at that. That is so awesome. Yeah, just in the middle of the grass. Bankman. So here's just a better look at the spotted harlequin snake that we just flipped under the rock. Um, I think the video cut off a little bit there as I sort of just flipped the rock back there. Um, so we'll just try to get a little bit of better footage despite this wind noise. Um, let's see if I can actually show you what he looks like in the shade. This light's quite harsh now. Um, they got this beautiful orange stripe all running all the way down the back there with the alternating yellow and black bands, or black bands on the yellow body. Um, this snake is absolutely tiny. Um, it's pretty much a fresh hatchling, a hatchling as they come. These guys feed on mainly legless limb <laughs> legless skinks um as well as the dwarf burrowing skinks which i'm pretty sure we're going to see quite a number of today so yeah super stoked to get this guy i'm just going to put him back under his little sexual this is a different section of rock come on brother um but i'm just going to pop him down under this rock piece of concrete and he can go on and live his life later brother well you never just quite know what you're going to get inside a mole heap i just turned up this Adult red sided skink, Trachylepis homocephalum, just inside a mole heap. I don't believe I've ever found a Trachylepis inside a mole heap. First time for everything, I guess. Can I snap some pictures of this dude real quick? Just let him go back in the rest of his mole heap. Yeah, frozen sight on the west coast. There's a dead angler child. There are cockroaches in here. Gross. Um, yeah, you can see all the scoots have actually fallen off. And now we just left with the bony plates. Of an unfortunate angler told us. Well, so we just stopped. We've been looking for snakes all day. Yeah, we got our guys. we got our first pathet of the day. He was actually getting harassed by a bunch of birds, but the birds have since taken off. Oh, he's a bit grumpy. Yeah, nice little female. It's very grumpy. Nice shit bones. Get my hook stick out the car so we can have a better look at it and then get some photographs. So here's just a closer look at this puff header that we just pulled off the road um, just so we can get a better look at it once it's safe to do so. Because we don't want to get hit by a car and we don't want the snake to get hit by a car. So really impressive snake. Well, that is it. Had a long day out at the west coast today. Had a bunch of other stuff up Table Mountain um, from a couple days ago. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you got this far, and I will see you on the next one.